Mouse guide is not in the meeting. Okay, Daniela, shall we start? Yep, yep. Okay, let's start. So, um, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone. So, welcome to uh, CCAM session. So, you know, actually, uh, this meeting is a kind of face-to-face uh, -face meeting. But, you know, uh, the chairs and the circular chairs cannot make the chip. So, sorry about that. And also, it seems that just no one from CCAM would be good uh, to attend this meeting in person. So, there's no one to sit in the, you know, chair up front. So yeah, let's start. Next. Next page. Daniele? I'm on the I'm on that note well. Can you see it? Uh, it being started. Yeah. Okay. So let's start from the load where I think this is a reminder about the IT policies. Uh, which says that by participating in the ITF, uh, you agree to follow ITF process and the policies, uh, including uh, patent policies. Next. And then there's a piece of the information about the, you know, uh, conduct guideline. The IET, IESG uh, has asked all the chairs to remind that the, the working group the need for appropriate behavior, uh, which means that you know uh, at any at all, any time, in any cases, we all you know uh, should respect uh, each other, especially uh, extend respect and the courtesy to our colleagues when we are you know are discussing or you know uh, you know uh, debate something. Next. So session, uh, this time we have only one session with two hours. Yeah. Next. So this agenda. So uh, this time we have, you know, uh, seven presentations. Actually, you know, most of the, you know, drafts have been uh, presented in the previous meetings. So I think actually uh, we should have sufficient time for discussion. Next. Yeah, there's some tips about this meeting. You know, actually, uh, this time it's a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, we So usually there will be some, you know, in-person participants, but for us, there's none. So actually we can skip this kind of thing. Uh, we all we all are remote. So I think, you know, uh, in, in, in the res, uh, recent uh, uh, meetings we all you know are uh, participating in the meeting by the remote you know uh, echo so we know how to you know participate in this kind of you know conference call next so for the mid echo i i think you know uh, one piece of information is very important when you are going to speak or comment please you know raise your hand to end the session queue yeah next and the uh, minute takers so actually uh, we have the online tools to capture the uh, minutes so if anyone could you know uh, take the min help us to take the minutes online that will be much appreciated and also i ask how many to help us at least and i'm not sure if oscar is here or not actually uh, oh oscar is online i think oscar can also uh, you know uh, help us so for the blue sheets, you know, uh, it will be automatically uh, created. So nothing for us to do. Yeah. Next. IPR process, you know, IPR pro policies is quite very important. So uh, prior to moving to next step in the working group process, uh, the chairs will send out the IPR polling. For example, uh, before an individual draft becomes a working group document, or a working group documents goes to last call, uh, we will send out IPR polling to the list. And uh, so it requires all the authors and contributors to reply the IPR polling as soon as possible. Otherwise, it will delay your uh, draft to move forward. Next. So uh, the, the things about the mailing list, 
you know, we always encourage people uh, to use the mailing list as much as possible to discuss anything about the, you know, uh, technologies inside the scope of the work, uh, C camp uh, working group. And, you know, um, there's important to remind the working group consensus is determined on the main list even though we get some consensus you know in the you know, online conference or face-to-face -face meeting we still need to bring it to the list you know uh, to confirm the consensus next okay it's for you Daniele yes thanks for that so let's go through a little bit uh, an update on the working group status since last meeting, we don't have uh, any new RFCs uh, or documents in the editor queue. Uh, actually, we, we have a couple of drafts uh, which are fairly in an advanced stage. We have uh, the OTN beyond the 100 gigabits uh, draft, uh, which uh, is waiting for the Shepherd, write, shepherd write up. And Oscar is is taking of that because both Fatai and us are are involved in the draft, and the other one is the transport NBI applicability document. Uh, these are the documents that we have on agenda today: the working group document on agenda, the optical impairment topology young model. RFC 1993BIS, which is the update of the layer zero types. We have uh, uh, the recently adopted uh, uh, OTN slicing draft uh, and the flexi grid uh, documents. Uh, no big changes uh, since the last uh, uh, meeting on these ones. Uh, the, as I said, the first and the third one are the ones that are uh, uh, past uh, working group last, uh, last call. Uh, and we also have the uh, microwave topology and the WSON tunnel, which uh, we could be ready to move forward soon because, if I'm not mistaken, the TIS working group is running uh, right now the last call of uh, the uh, uh, T model, of the tunnel T model. Um, a little update on the documents not being discussed today, not an agenda. Uh, the client signal young model, we have minimal updates. It's just to keep alive. Uh, there, are there are still some pending issues uh, uh, to work on, uh, the, like uh, resiliency, port layer, etc. And then, uh, I mean, that should be in, in a fairly good, uh, stable status uh, as well. Um, then we have the WDM interface LMP. Uh, I think that a little bit of review discussion is needed, but also that document is in a pretty stable condition. Then we have the Ethernet client T topology Young and the L1 CSM. They are both uh, um, pretty stable documents. Uh, the layer one CSM uh, um, has been updated and uh, uh, to, to, to fix uh, the comments received from the Young dot review. Uh, I was wondering whether we should uh, uh, ask the OPSA working group to have a review on this, since uh, all the layer two and layer three services uh, are uh, in, the, in the operation area. Uh, what, what, what do you think, uh, Fatai? Uh, should we, or maybe John, if uh, uh, if you are um, if you are with us, what do you think? Should we ask uh, ask them for uh, for a review? Uh, I mean. Uh, I don't know if you already read this document, but uh, it's uh, it's a sort of uh, uh, layer one version of the, the, the service models that the, uh, the operation area has been working on. Uh, the layer L2SM and L3SM with the dedicated working groups and the L3NM and L2NM in the OPSA working group. Yeah, I haven't read them. Um, I... I mean, what what you describe makes sense, and uh, early reviews are never a bad idea. So, 
Okay, maybe 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 we can. Okay, maybe we can do that as as a sort of a final check before moving it forward. Uh, layer one types. Uh, this was uh, 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 we have minimal mini, minimal uh, updates here uh, here as well uh, as well as the OTN topology young model. These these are the two next uh, in in the row to be uh, to go through the last call. Uh, OTN tunnel model. This is another uh, document with a dependency on the uh, related the document in this so that uh, the the ITFTE uh, so this uh, this is this will be unlocked uh, as uh, as well uh, we didn't hear from the authors uh, uh, regarding the uh, DWDM interface parameters young model that that draft expired so I don't know if uh, uh, any of the authors would like to say something about uh, about the plans for the draft. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Gabriel and Gert were holding the pen for this document. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So we are uh, we are still trying to align this document with the uh, with the topology, both in terms of, and also with layer zero types. Uh, so we are kind of waiting a little bit for that to materialize and then update it um, accordingly. Okay, great, thanks. Milestones, actually. Uh, it was time to have uh, a, a refresh of the milestones. Uh, this is, uh, uh, let me say, uh, the plan. Uh, um, the plan forward. Uh, you see, there is a pretty dense uh, um, number of uh, deadlines uh, uh, in. Uh, in the next months. This is due to the fact that uh, we have a number of pretty stable documents, pretty mature documents. Uh, most of them uh, have gone through the young daughter review. So we expect uh, in the next months uh, to be ready to, 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 to progress many, many documents to, to the last call. Some of them were, uh, uh, let me say, kept old by uh, other documents uh, that they, they uh, non technologic tech, technologic specific ones in these now that those blocks are removed uh, we we are ready to to progress there is uh, quite some work to do uh, on all technologies you see microwave otn uh, w so and so uh, we are planning to keep the secamp working group active uh, for uh, for 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 the next years at least Liaisons and communication. We received uh, uh, a communication from uh, from Etsy. Actually, uh, this was uh, uh, sent just to the chairs list of T's, Ops, uh, and C Camp. I only realized about that uh, in in the last days, and I forwarded it to the uh, working group mailing list. So if you if you search for it uh, in your mailbox, uh, you will find it uh, coming from me and not from Etsy. It's classified as communication because actually the ITF doesn't have a formal liaison relationship with uh, with Etsy. Uh, but I mean, uh, this is uh, something for uh, uh, for information. They are telling us uh, uh, that the ISG. NFV uh, is uh, uh, has started a work uh, on the WIM, the One Infrastructure Manager, and uh, uh, they they are planning to use NetConf, RESTConf, uh, Young Models, uh, and base it on on ACTN. So that's why these OPSA working group and CCAMP are uh, might be interested in this communication. That's it. Any question before uh, we jump uh, into the first presentation? Uh, 
Can you hear me? Yes, please, Sergio. Okay. Good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm going to present an update uh, uh, related to the uh, optical impairment aware topology model. Next. Okay, so uh, from an administrative point of view, uh, we uh, going on uh, to have uh, the weekly call uh, uh, on Tuesday about uh, the, this uh, draft uh, to discuss the different issues and topics. Uh, related to the update, uh, we have uh, uh, done uh, update uh, both from text point of view in the drafts uh, and uh, the, the, the young part. Uh, we uh, restructure, uh, we change the front page uh, list uh, addressing uh, the usual issue about the five uh, front page autos list uh, and putting uh, a specific appendix uh, the other co-author list uh, and contributors. Uh, we uh, added uh, uh, text uh, to uh, overcoming uh, uh, an ambiguity present uh, in the in the text uh, related to uh, what is uh, a switching block that uh, many times is uh, um, uh, called uh, Rodam uh, and uh, the full equipped device. So we restructure the terminology. Uh, to clarify uh, Rodan meaning, uh, put uh, ITUT reference for that, uh, and uh, introducing uh, uh, terminology uh, for WDM node uh, in the related to the uh, physical device and uh, the WDM T node uh, uh, to distinguish the, 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 the physical device from the uh, uh, T node concept. Uh, uh, as uh, described in uh, uh, this uh, the topology. Uh, we added text uh, in the section 2.3. Uh, 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 also, this uh, uh, in the optics of, uh, uh, in the view to align with uh, uh, terminology uh, from ITUT um, regarding uh, uh, the introduction of, uh, to substitute OMS and OTS link with OMS OTS media channel group. Uh, and uh, we, 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 we touch the, the text 2.4 uh, to add the description uh, of uh, RAM amplification. And uh, we added text uh, to clarify the usage of the term channel <coughs> versus uh, a media channel. So the media channel uh, uh, is described uh, in the G807 as uh, a both uh, a topology model and uh, uh, related to the uh, uh, the resource. Uh, in the context of our drafts, uh, we uh, use the term uh, occasionally. We use the term uh, uh, channel. Uh, to indicate the resource of uh, related to the media channel, so frequency slot or effective frequency slot, without uh, uh, representing topology. Uh, <clears throat> from young uh, part, uh, we fix uh, four basic uh, issue and uh, introducing uh, the Raman amplification uh, feature. Next, please. So uh, this, uh, this uh, picture is just to represent and synthesize uh, the changing uh, regarding the terminology. Um, we, uh, for fast, for, uh, uh, we represent here uh, the case of uh, integrated uh, WDM nodes. Uh, and uh, we put uh, the WDM node as uh, representing the physical device. And uh, the WDMT nodes, uh, um, uh, they um, in the in the same way as integrated uh, uh, 
in the, the WDMT node uh, related to the concept of RFC 8795. Uh, here we represented the integrated uh, architecture, but the TA node uh, uh, is working in the same way in case uh, um, of uh, uh, disaggregated uh, uh, architecture. Uh, WDM T node uh, uh, ex, uh, hiding uh, what is the interconnection uh, between degree and uh, a drop blocks. Um, we uh, change, uh, as said, uh, the OMS and OTS link uh, with the OMS uh, uh, media channel group and OTS media channel group. And this is uh, uh, the representation of uh, the changing. Next. One of the issues that uh, uh, we uh, uh, solve is uh, uh, the fact that we want to use uh, our model to describe also topology where the rodams uh, have uh, one or multiple external shelf uh, with the uh, uh, optical transponder. Uh, the links uh between the 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 dot uh, uh hosted uh, in the in this uh, external shelf uh can be described uh, uh with uh, with the t link with optical impairment as uh, we made for the rest uh, the, the the point is that uh, in this case uh, there is no uh multiplexing there is not, uh, and uh, for this uh, reason, even if uh, the uh, optical impairment are the same, uh, we introduce text to uh, describe uh, explicitly these, uh, these points so that the, the, the impairments related to the link between remote optical transponder located in a different shelf can also be modeled using the same optical impairment as those defined for a link between WDMT nodes. So this uh, is an explicit test that is introduced in the, in the drafts. Um, and uh, in this case, the uh, external shelf uh, can be uh, considered uh, again as a, a WDMT node uh, with the only difference that uh, uh, only termination capabilities is presented, not switching. Next. So uh, as said, uh, we introduce uh, the Raman uh, um, the Raman uh, um, feature, uh, the uh, the Raman amplifier distributed uh, amplifier, uh, and uh, we uh, model both uh, the uh, uh, the co-propagating uh, uh, Raman amplifier in which the optical signal is injecting in the same direction of the amplified signal and the counter propagating in which the optical pan, pump is injected uh, in the uh, opposite direction of the optical signal. Um, the uh, Raman, um, uh, uh, from model perspective, the Raman amplifier is uh, um, modeled as uh, two uh, OMS uh, um, element. Uh, so the, a passive fiber that has to take into account the, the fiber loss and uh, uh, an amplifier element uh, uh, providing all the uh, properties that we have defined for amplifier. Um, the uh, amplifier element is placed uh, where the pump is located and we have geolocation information indicate the location of the pump. Um, and uh, to distinguish uh, uh, the Raman amplifier from, uh, uh, it, for example, EDFA uh, amplifier, uh, we have in the model the type variety attribute. Um, we introduce uh, specific uh, attributes uh, to uh, model that, uh, that uh, is the um, Raman direction. Uh, to uh, distinguish the co-propagating with respect to the counter-propagating uh, case. Uh, 
and the uh, Raman pump with the frequency uh, and uh, the power related. Next. So this is uh, uh, in, in, in here is the, the young model uh, uh, modification. As we said, uh, highlighted in yellow, uh, there we have uh, uh, under uh, uh, the same tractor of the amplifier and in the group of uh, um, parameters uh, uh, related to the uh, amplifier parameters, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, the, 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 the definition of uh, the, the attributes that uh, I mentioned before. Uh, we also added also uh, in the context of amplifier, uh, the uh, total uh, output power. Um, th this is, uh, 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 and uh, uh, this, uh, the total output power that uh, uh, represent uh, uh, the output power measure uh, in the related range of frequency that uh, we have as attributes. And uh, this is important, uh, uh, total, the total output power to, uh, um, to recompute uh, the consistency between the span fiber loss with respect to the loss gain in the elements uh, uh, along the OMS. Uh, uh, link. Next. Okay, uh, we. Uh, uh, this is another issue that we solve in this uh, period. Uh, that uh, um, we wanted to uh, uh, avoid unspecific, uh, specified uh, behavior in case of, of uh, mandatory attribute. Uh, for example, uh, if. Uh, the server is not present, so to avoid the uh, strange value that can be uh, returned because it's mandatory, and so something has to be uh, returned. But even in for optional uh, case, uh, uh, we want to distinguish the case in which there is a real problem. For example, the service uh, is not able from uh, what uh, uh, is uh, the not applicable uh, case. For example, the till. Uh, for amplifier, uh, the tilt target attributes uh, is uh, um, is needed and uh, has to be returned in case of EDFA uh, amplifier, but uh, is not a problem uh, uh, in case it is not returned that uh, because does not uh, is not applicable in case of Raman. So are uh, two different cases, and for this uh, um, point. Uh, we uh, introduce uh, uh, the uh, type empty, uh, taking from RSC uh, 7951. Uh, and uh, uh, we, have, uh, um, uh, we have introduced uh, in the module uh, the description that uh, distinguish the case that uh, if the value of a mandatory attribute is unknown, it must be reported using the empty type. So. Um, in case uh, we, we change uh, many uh, of the type of the attributes, uh, putting the union between uh, uh, specific type as it is now and uh, uh, the, the case of empty, in case the, um, uh, the, the, in, the impossibility to return uh, um, the value. Uh, in case of optional, if it is applicable, as in case of mandatory, it must be reported uh, uh, in case if it's unknown, it must be reported in the empty type. In case uh, the optional attribute is not applicable to an entity, it must be omitted because it's not present in the data store. This is a sentence introduced in the module description. Um, and uh, uh, next uh, next slide, that is... Uh... Uh, we have uh, Rob uh, in, in, in the queue. Do you have a question specific to this slide that uh, maybe we... Ah, uh, sorry. I, I yes, I do. Uh, so Rob Walton, Cisco, I, I think this is possibly over-engineering it. So I don't quite know the cases where you can't return data. If this is a, a plausible case or you're thinking just like I want to um, cover sort of 
belt and braces and make sure cover all scenarios. I think it would be better if, you, if the expectation is you can sometimes not return this value, then don't make it mandatory. If the expectation is that the server should always return this value, if that's sensible and sane, then mark is mandatory. And if it comes to the case where for, for some reason, the server is unable to return the value, it just doesn't give it to you. So it just doesn't send anything. So I'm, I'm not sure that this is a problem you want to solve this way here, because because either it's a generic Yang issue, I'm not a generic solution, or um, or otherwise you seem to be sort of engineering a very specific way around this. And I'm not sure that that's a good choice. Is, is this something that is already been discussed uh, in uh, uh, in Netmod? In... Uh, not not recently that I can think of. Um, it did come up in the discussion to the M NMDA architecture where the there's, there's text in that that effectively says that the server is allowed to not return data in these sort of scenarios. Um, the one case that is interesting is if you have telemetry and you're streaming telemetry off the box, then if you don't send a value, then you have a case where you don't know it's you got no value or just the re receiver is expecting to have the previous value it received. Um, so, I, but I think this would be worth raising as a more general question on the netmod alias to see what the comments are on this idea. Yeah, uh, a good uh, observation. The point is that, uh, okay, we, we have also uh, people that is working with us uh, and we have in parallel already someone that is implementing that. And uh, so the fact that to have a strange value that has been uh, coming back uh, in case the value is not known, uh, it was a problem during the implementation. So we try to solve uh, uh, in parallel of the description of the drafts, also the problem that is coming from, let me say, the, the, the experimental field. And so uh, this was uh, apparently a good solution. I mean, I, I bet it is, but uh, I mean, as Rob said, that this is something that needs to be solved in a more uh, general way, uh, probably not in Secant, maybe in that mode. Yeah, my, what I'm saying is that in the meantime, what uh, we need to have some uh, solution for that. This is the point. Well, but if you if you raise it in the netmod alias and discuss it, hopefully that will come to a conclusion fairly quickly as to what it is. And if this is the deemed to be the right way of doing this, that's great. Then we we find out we do it consistently. But it, I think okay. you find that this in like the Yang Doctor reviews of this document um, that this would come up as being an unusual way of modeling this. Yep, yeah. we we, we can raise it. We can raise the question as a working group, if if, if you prefer, or uh, I mean, uh, since most of you are uh, active participants in that mod, if you wanted to do it yourself, as you prefer. If you believe that uh, raising the question as a working group uh, is uh, is better, we can do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, uh, you can uh, you can uh, bring. Uh, uh, the, 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 the question to the working to the working group to the, to, to, to netmod and ask uh, to have it solved uh, in, in a generic way as you prefer let us know if you want us uh, to, 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 to to raise the issue there is italo in in queue yeah italo please thank you uh, just on this point uh, uh, i agree to 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 raise this question to netmod and to get some advice from them uh, just to clarify a bit the reason why th this was requested uh, if you if you don't report an attribute, uh, there was a, an, an interest for uh, the client to know whether the, the attribute is missing because uh, it has not to be reported for that specific configuration or it is missing because uh, for some reasons uh, it's not uh, available, it's unknown. And that's the reason why we had uh, these, uh, these different... Uh, not reporting uh, at all doesn't give this, uh, this capability to notify the client. But I, we can clarify this question to the netmod and get their advice. Yes. Well, probably it, it will make it more efficient to rather uh, to say this is the problem and we thought to solve it in this way. And we, we believe that this is the way to solve it rather than just saying, hey, we have a problem, please solve it. Probably. 
and just one other thought on that is again i didn't quite pick up the nuance of the different sort of not reporting the values you're saying there but it may be that you would be better off if you need to get that extra distinction in there to have an enumeration as your second union type and then you could have a enumerated value that's more clear as to to what it means to return uh, that rather than returning null like returning empty is quite a strange thing to return operationally Sergio. Okay. Next. Okay, here is uh, the example how is uh, we uh, introduce the uh, modification. So, for example, we have uh, uh, created uh, uh, the, the 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 list of type def in layer zero type extension. Uh, I don't know, like. For example, type def power in db or null, and in this case uh, we have uh, the union uh, union uh, be, 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 uh, between the power in db and uh, and then the empty case, uh, and in parallel we have changed uh, a lot of attributes, uh, uh, putting the union instead of uh, the single type. This is what uh, we have done. <laughs> Okay, next. Okay, as usual, we track uh, tracking uh, open issue in uh, this link, and uh, we uh, close uh, nine issue uh, since the last ITF. We have still uh, eleven uh, open issue. Um, well, we have. 11, but uh, uh, there are uh, some issues, uh, these four uh, in the first ballot, uh, that uh, uh, we already know how to uh, solve that, and so uh, will be solved with the next uh, pull request, uh, because I already discussed and agreed. Um, the, uh, the, the, the issue 88, uh, uh, they uh, have been already discussed and we just uh, uh, waiting for text proposal, but uh, also this has been clarified. Um, the issue 79 that is related to the XPAT in LeafRef, and uh, here we need uh, clarification uh, from NetMod. We have uh, a specific uh, um, uh, presentation today for uh, this uh, point um, we uh, need to review terminology and uh, um, and uh, they are uh, um, young model development process uh, uh, so not uh, let me say uh, directly involve uh, both text and uh, uh, the young part um, next So we consider that the model is in very good shape. Uh, uh, we are analyzing possible leading enhancement uh, covering uh, new feature, but uh, the, the model is already in a very good shape. Um, uh, the, uh, we need to address uh, the remaining issue. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we can be ready for a young doctor uh, review. Um, and uh, we uh, plan to have a stable version by the end of the year. So uh, from uh, ITF uh, 115. That's I, all I, for my yeah. side. Uh, any question? Yeah, the way you enjoy your uh, your work, it's a very good shape, not just good. So it, it, you are satisfied with that. Any question uh, while I pull up the next slides? None. Okay. So I think we, we, we can move on. Okay. Uh, good morning again. I'm Sergio Velotti again. <laughs> so this is uh, the uh, new drafts that uh, is uh, 
uh, the restructure of the layer zero type extension draft uh, with the, uh, the new name of RFC 9093BIS. Um, next slide. Um, okay. So uh, this document uh, uh, is uh, obsoleting uh, the RFC 1993 uh, um, and encompassing uh, uh, the content of RFC 1993 with the content of layer zero type extension. Um, we, uh, we are following for this restructure of the document, uh, uh, the comment that we received uh, at the ITF 112. Um, and with the, the last pull request, uh, we restructured the document uh, uh, to become uh, uh, the, the, the new one, RFC 1993 Um For the, mod, the update, uh, we added also the layer zero technology specific constraint issue uh, related to the issue 35. Uh, so we added uh, GSNR margin and GSNR estimated uh, um, that are uh, uh, output of path computation. This is coming from uh, uh, the analysis made in the optical path computation drafts. Next, please. Okay, this is the young uh, structure for the new uh, um, grouping. Uh, um so we we introduce uh, as i said the gsnr merging uh, as input of the path computation in the path constraint and uh, we added the estimated gsnr as output of the path computation next uh we uh, added uh, more line coding identities uh, so there was a comment uh, uh, during uh, in the optical impairments that uh, we do not address uh, uh, the uh, gross bit rate. Uh, so we uh, we uh, what we we have done to uh, address this issue 100 in optical impairments is to introduce a new uh, leaf. Uh, that is just for bit rate. Um, uh, that is uh, um, to, to, to indicate uh, the gross bit rate like 100, 200, 300 uh, for optical tributary signal. But uh, we still exploit uh, at line coding bit rate uh, uh, leaf uh, in case of standard reference uh, when uh, there is not just the bit rate that is uh, uh, needed, but uh, for example, also modulation format. Because uh, for definition in, of line coding uh, uh, in ITUT, line coding is more than the line bit rate, it's just representing other attributes. Next. Okay, here is uh, the modification we have done uh, related to the issue 99 we discussed uh, before in optical impairment for the empty, uh, for in, in case <coughs> we do not get um, uh, value uh, in, uh, in, uh, in some cases. Uh, uh, so we introduce new type def uh, for that uh, and uh, update uh, uh, types. Uh, in uh, optical impairments and layer zero type extension uh, in some grouping uh, uh, with uh, the new type empty uh, and with the union uh, between the value, uh, the, 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 the former type and uh, the new type empty. Next. So next step for these, uh, um, uh, these drafts. Uh, so we need a we still need uh, in the restructure of the, the of the, the two documents, uh, so the, the, the RFC 1993 and the layer zero type extension, we need to reconcile the introduction. Uh, so the introduction coming from RFC with the new one uh, from the layer zero type extension. We need to complete uh, the uh, appendix A uh, because we need to report the changing uh, from uh, RFC 1993. 
and uh, we plan to, 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 to fix uh, the remaining issue. This is, that's all for my side. Thank you. Any questions? So actually here, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this is, uh, uh, we, we thought it was a good idea to have a BIS with respect to RFC 1993. Um, I don't know, I've seen uh, other working groups having the same issue, issue and solving it in a different way. <clears throat> For example, recently in this, I've, I've seen a draft, I don't remember which one, uh, where uh, uh, the authors were requested to just uh, uh, write a small draft with an update. So uh, I don't know. So, so, sorry, John, for uh, bothering you again. I know it's pretty early for you, but ca ca can you please confirm that the BC is the right way to, to go here? Or do, do you prefer uh, an update uh, like they are doing in this? Uh I, I apologize. I was distracted. Say the question again. So this is uh, uh, we we recently published uh, RFC 1993. This is uh, a an update to that one. We are adding uh, some uh, parameters, uh, some uh, concepts that we removed uh, in order to have uh, 1993 published uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty fast. Uh, I've seen uh, two different ways uh, of uh, solving this issue. The one is to go for a BIS, uh, and the other one is uh, to write uh, a small draft uh, with just an update. Um, I've seen in the past that the BIS was the most uh, uh, widely adopted uh, uh, solution here. I just wanted to, to have a confirmation uh, uh, from you that this is the right way forward, uh, or uh, yeah. uh, if okay, perfect. I, I, yeah, I, I, I get the question now. Yeah, so, I mean, r right, you're absolutely right. You could do it either way. Um, I personally like the BIS better because then it keeps all the material in one document. That That's exactly the way we, we, we would, the reason why we chose to go for that. Okay, thanks. Rob? Uh, yes, just to echo what John's saying. I think if you're completely replacing the Yang model before, then doing abyss and um, obsoleting the previous one is the is the best way. Great, thanks. But I last you know ITF meeting there were lots of the discussion on this issue and there was a consensus that the working group preferred to uh, publish you know a kind of this RFC. Yeah, so I agree with John. Good. We are ready for the next presentation. Oh, voice check. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. OK, thank you. Um, so today, I'm. Um, this is Iwa from FutureWay, and I'm uh, presenting this uh, 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 slides for the framework and data model for OTN slicing on behalf of all the co-authors and uh, contributors. Next page. Okay, so here's a, <coughs> a brief update uh, of the draft since um, the last IETF. Um, we have uh, this draft, it was uh, a working group adopted and we have had uh, inter-meeting and uh, discussions on the mailing list about um, um, how this uh, draft uh, will be uh, moving forward. Um, the GitHub repository was also <coughs> transferred to CCAMP uh, with all the records and, uh, and the meeting minutes uh, in there. Um, so I would encourage everyone to come to the, to the GitHub and check it out. Um, we also have a weekly uh, call on th every Thursday um, on the, um, on the uh, the main side and for this revision the main update is on the draft text uh, to address comments and consensus from the um, from the discussions uh, we have done a lot of work uh, with uh, uh, alignment uh, with relevant drafts uh, which includes the uh, T's uh, network slicing framework um, the uh, network slicing Yang model um, 
and uh, the applicability for ICTN on, net on network slicing, <coughs> um, as well as um, the model, um, uh, the, in the interview draft on uh, defining the model um, uh, network slice uh, structure. Next page. <coughs> so here we um, like to present some conclusions on uh, the discussions um, on um, the way we move forward with OTN slicing. Uh, so first, um, first of all, there was a very good uh, summary from Keith on the framework for IETF network slices, uh, thanks to Adrian, uh, in which the two relevant um, points uh, to net OTN slicing is, uh, first of all, uh, the scope for IETF network slice must uh, include any use of, uh, must uh, uh, basically it's applicable to uh, any uh, scenarios uh, beyond the 5G. And uh, second is the interest for IETF network slice is to cover um, the mapping of IETF network slice services uh, to any IETF network, uh, which includes not just IP, but um, OTN and uh, any um, technology specific layers, uh, which um, then supports our conclusions um, below, which says um, uh, the technology specific slicing for OTN is in scope. Um, and uh, also uh, the use cases for OTN uh, justifies the need uh, for slicing in OTN networks. Um, and we also uh, see uh, the conclusion that uh, uh, the, the use of a slice and OTN slicing, um, there are proper terms for OTN um, as long as they are in the context of IETF network slicing. And uh, an OTN slice uh, in, in this case is an uh, indeed an IETF network slice when the IETF network is OTN. Um, and uh, the OTN slice controller um, in the context of IETF network slicing is, a, um, is considered as an IETF network slice realizer um, for OTN. And we, um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I haven't finished the last one. Yeah, so the, there are three other bullets, uh, just say, um, for example, uh, layer one VPN, uh, T topology and T tunnels can be considered as a realization of an OTN slice. Um, and also, uh, we briefly touched uh, uh, the discussion on whether OTN slice MBI is uh, top down, uh, is used as a top down um, configuration or um, bottom up. And the conclusion is it is uh, uh, an intent interface which can uh, be used as a top down configuration to, uh, to configure an OTN slice. Uh, the, uh, it is also agreed that, that the OTN slice MBI uh, it should augment uh, the IETF and NSC MBI. Uh, next page. Yeah, so here are the main text updates. Uh, so we added uh, descriptions uh, for the three options of uh, configuring uh, an OTN slice, um, as I will show on the next page. And uh, we also added uh, uh, text to clarify um, the relationship between OTN slice uh, intent and its realization, which is which can be used uh, can be realized by any uh, existing means, as shown on the previous page. Uh, we added text uh, to uh, clarify that OTN slice control MBI is technology spec specific and augments the IETF network slice MBI. Um, there are also uh, some uh, minor uh, changes um, on the format of the document. Um, and also we addressed uh, Tom's com comments in the mailing list. Um, there are uh, with, with other cosmetic updates. Next page. So here's a, an updated diagram on the right side and in which we uh, clearly marked the three uh, different options as uh, that can be uh, 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 used 
to create uh, an OTN slice uh, with option one being the uh, IETF network slice controller uh, directly interface with uh, the PNC. Um, and in this case, uh, no OTNS slice controller is used. Um, and uh, in option two, an IETF network slice controller could uh, interface with an OTN slice controller and and uh, uh, delegate the the uh, creation of an OTN slice to the OTN slice controller. Uh, and then in addition, we have a third option uh, for any uh, technology specific, uh, um, for, for any OTN aware uh, customer uh, as uh, for example, an OTN uh, OSS or BSS to interface with an OTN slice controller uh, to create a technology specific slice in the in the OTN domain. Next page. Um, there is a, a very little uh, Yang model updates in this revision, uh, and just to to format uh, just on the formatting to conform with the Yang guidelines, uh, and we plan to make uh, additional updates uh, once we clarify. Uh, the way moving forward with OTN slicing. Next page. Um, we also did uh, um, some discussion on uh, harmonizing with the uh, network slice and uh, as as yeah as um, I think I already uh, said we agreed for the OTN slice Yang uh, OTN slice control MBI model to augment uh, the network slice MBI model from I from TIS. Um, we are currently uh, analyzing the model structures um, and um, for the network slice MBI, um, most specifically, we are ch checking uh, whether the network slice MBI uh, contains all the required parameters for OTN slicing, uh, and whether uh, which parameters are technology agnostic, uh, which could be technology specific uh, for uh, IP, um, etc., and uh, whether we uh, um, whether the base model, uh, the network slice MPI, can support uh, resource-based slicing um, with topologies. Um, but if not, um, we will be adding uh, this uh, support in the OTN slicing uh, model. Okay. Next page. Yeah. Um, we are also harmonizing with another draft, the T's applicability uh, of um, ACTN on slicing. Um, and we have agreed for the uh, author of that draft to um, uh, give an update on the figure, which describes the mapping of IETF network slice controller to the ACTN MDSC in order to uh, clarify the interfaces used in this uh, in this um, uh, mapping. Uh, the the main thoughts towards that change is that uh, we have an MDSC which could consist of um, a service orchestrator as well as a network orchestrator. And in that respect, the IETF NSC MBI uh, uh, slash OTN slide OTN SC MBI. Uh, is uh, equivalent to uh, an interface between the MDC service orchestrator and network orchestrator. Um, and there's uh, there's currently no uh, official name for that, um, but I, I think we, we will leave for the uh, author of that draft to uh, clarify. Next page. Um, so the next steps for this draft is uh, to, uh, we will continue uh, to address the comments from the working group and uh, we'll uh, uh, start the work to align and augment IETF network slice Yang um, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, add OTN technology specific definitions such as SLOs and uh, other parameters according to the next discussions. Yeah. I think that's it. Any questions, uh, comments, more than welcome. Thank you. I have one. Uh, um, oh, Fatai, you go first. 
So uh, it seems that uh, ego is not in the conference call and which makes your life easier. But anyway, I would like to double check uh, if all of the you know open issues raised by uh, ego have been addressed or are there any uh, open issues uh, left? Uh, I think that the uh, main issue uh, raised by Igor on whether it's uh, necessary to have OTN slicing, I think it has been addressed um, uh, and have be, has been concluded as I shown in the slides. Um, there are there are a few uh, other uh, questions about uh, uh, about uh, uh, I th slicing, but I think it's it's. Uh, not OTN tech, uh, specific. It's uh, it's a slicing uh, in general, right? Um, that uh, can be uh, addressed by T's. Um, so, for for example, one other question is whether like a slice could support just a P2P or uh, like uh, it could support the P2P, P2P, P2MP, or MP2MP. Um, it has to support all of them in order to consider to be considered as OT, as a slicing service. Uh, I think those kind of questions are really relevant to network slicing in general and can be done in T's. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, in fact, uh, I mean, uh, Adrian was presenting uh, the, other day in, the other day in T's uh, and uh, he was asking uh, if uh, uh, there were uh, questions uh, coming from CCAMP uh, that still needed to be addressed. But, uh, I think that with the discussion that we had on the TIS meeting list, uh, we should consider uh, all these issues more or less solved. If there is any anything else uh, left to discuss, uh, uh, let, uh, let's put together a list of the um, issues still, uh, still open, right? Good. Next one is uh, done. Hi guys, morning. Um, Daniela, you can delegate uh, the controls to me. I can click a button on your behalf. Of course. Uh, so hi, good morning. Uh, we want to provide a quick update on uh, two documents, uh, the, the FlexiGrid doc document, one was the topology, the other is the tunnel, and also just raise uh, some issue that we've actually been having that not only affects these two documents, but also affects uh, other CCAMP and also uh, T's documents in the way that we use augmentations and uh, when statements. Uh, so Daniele, I don't, don't have the ability to uh, advance the slides yet. I think it's it's quite technical. I think that only works if uh, you're projecting PDF that's been uploaded and this looks like it's coming from uh, uncooked PowerPoint on Daniel's uh, Okay. Just uh, uh, I'll turn them for you. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. Great. So uh, this. This document uh, has been uh, relatively finished. It's stable. Uh, we had uh, various uh, comments that we needed to address um, after the last call. So thank you, Tom and Adrian, uh, for that. Uh, we really kind of just had to resolve the issue with um, the augmentations. That that that's that that was the main issue with the document, and that's really why uh, why the document was slightly delayed. Uh, and I will I will cover that uh, with some slides uh, a little later. But for all intents and purposes, uh, the topology document for FlexiGrid is is now finished. And if the working group um, is happy with our solution uh, for the augmentations, then we will um, proceed with this document and submit it. Uh, next slide, please. So the um, the tunnel document. Oh, there is a, a slight typo there. Just to see if anyone's paying attention. Still, we actually changed it from media channel to to tunnel. Um, but essentially, this is a, a document which isn't as mature as the FlexiGrid topology document. There's there's still uh, quite a bit of work uh, that needs to be done with the document. The code itself is is relatively stable. 
uh, but there has been some uh, dependencies with other documents. Uh, there's also uh, some specific sort of technical uh, discussion that's required for things like um, uh, the way the tunnel is used and dependencies. Uh, or associations with the OTSIG, um, specifically the tunnel identifiers and, and sort of uh, path setup. So there's also um, some further sort of ancillary work that's happening with the path computation document as well. So we we just expect this document uh, to have multiple issues that are going to be dis discussed. Uh, as you probably remember, we have a uh, a weekly call for the FlexiGrid dot documents. The focus is now really on the tunnel document itself, but we've we've also um, moved the path computation discussion into our FlexiGrid calls. So when you see the invites uh, for the FlexiGrid discussion, I should really sort of add um, our sort of um, optical path computation um, uh, topic to that as well. And those calls uh, have been postponed uh, just prior to and during IETF. 113, but those will restart uh, after 113. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in fact, uh, Daniele, could you go on to the next slide now? I'll skip this one. So what was the issue that affected the topology document? And you know, I think here we need to kind of highlight um, the great work that our, our, our Yang doctors do when they review the Yang code. There is uh, obviously a lot of uh, technology specific uh, content um, that they have to kind of pass. And for CCAMP and T's, we have a tendency to use with our Yang models, um, uh, uh, numerous augmentations, um, often numbering sort of tens, as many as 50 and one document um, I looked, I had over a hundred augmentations. And I suppose that's just the kind of the nature of the technology that we're dealing with. Here. Most of these are controlled uh, by when statements. And when we when we have the when statement sort of highlighted in blue there, I'm moving my mouse, but, but you can't see that. Um, but essentially on the graphic there, uh, we also have to um, sort of test um, for the presence of the container in the network type. And there's usually multiple um, levels as well. Um, could be just sort of four levels, could be sort of 10 levels. Um, and because the augmentation takes place at different levels, um, we use the relative form of the XPath statement. So it's very important that, that those dot dot dashes are actually at the right level. And you can see, I think, on the right of that slide, um, all the yellow uh, uh, horizontal dots are essentially where we use those when statements. And that, that's just one single document, which is our probably our topology document. And it's not as numerous, that, that, that when function is not as numerous as other T's and CCAMP documents. So that, that's a lot of work that needs to be done, not not obviously by just the Yang doctor, but anyone who's actually a you know, human who's uh, sort of reading through or passing this document. Uh, next slide, please. So there's good news, uh, actually. Uh, there is a function. Um, it's a X, uh, an axis or a construct. Uh, and it uses this thing called an ancestor function. So instead of having to um, sort of use a when statement and specify um, the, uh, the relative location um, um, that you're augmenting, you can just specify uh, the ancestor state statement instead of using that relative path. And that makes things a lot easier for humans who are reading or reviewing uh, this document. And, and again, not just the Yang doctors, but, but anyone, the vendors or uh, potential um, users uh, of this technology. So this is, um, this is a cool feature. And we started using it extensively um, in our documents. And uh, next slide, please. We hit an issue when we started uploading uh, our, our, our new uh, uh, internet drafts um, through the submissions tool because it turns out it breaks um, one of the tests that is performed. So the, the Yangling test 
is actually something that happens when you when you upload your document we you can use it um, to sort of test uh, code before you submit and this we thought would be maybe just a, a minor issue um, we kind of flagged it to the experts in netmod and we got a, a kind of mixed response because uh, there were uh, several people in NetMelt that thought, well, um, it's a legitimate use of um, Yang. It may be sort of esoteric, uh, as in sort of fairly specialized, but that shouldn't deter us from using this function. Uh, there were other people um, who thought that actually um, we, sh we, we, we probably might be uh, um, I guess, what's the word? Yeah, um, suggested that uh, we should not use this uh, feature because it was not well understood and clearly not all the tools actually support this ancestor function. We should revert back to our sort of um, uh, uh, relative um, path uh, when using the augmentation, uh, the when statement for augmentation. So we are kind of, you know, we, we, we bounce sort of backwards and forwards uh, for about a month, um, just really trying to figure out what to do here. Um, ultimately, from an implementation perspective, when it's you know, read by machine, it's, it's not a major issue. But considering you know, we, we do expect more Yang models in the future, and there are sort of, uh, I suppose, uh, not just impacts here for CCAMP, but also T's. It, it, it would be worth kind of widening the discussion beyond uh, the FlexiGrid folks to see what what other people thought um, of this. For the time being, we've reverted back to our previous code base, uh, as mentioned, so we're no longer using the ancestor function, which is a shame, um, but that's where we are now because we just wanted to move ahead with the document. And that's that's it. So I'd just like to open it up to the chairs and, and the rest of the working group. Robert, you go first. Sorry, I didn't realize I put my hand up and then the uh, me checker was, wasn't quite working. Uh, yes, I, I actually think here um, my personal preference is um, if it if the existing one works, then that's going to give you the widest sort of um, deployability. Most tools are going to work with that. Whereas if you try and do the sort of clever thing, even though technically it might be allowed, I would suggest you, you're more likely to hit tooling issues in future. I think if we want to um, support this, I would suggest this goes on like the Yang Next issue tracker and is more explicitly thought about in the context of an updated version of Yang would be my view on this. Um, I think you that keeping it simple, even though you've got the longer expressions, is probably the best way. That's just my my personal opinion. I was about to say exactly the opposite. So <laughs> let's <laughs> let's do what Rob suggests. <laughs> I mean, uh, my 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 take here is that uh, I mean, uh, since if it was uh, a document that we needed to publish tomorrow, I would uh, I would suggest to revert. Uh, absolutely uh, but i mean uh, since uh, there are still uh, many things uh, to be done uh, i think we can wait and see if uh, other working groups are embracing uh, uh, this, uh, this this functionality and uh, the tools uh, will get uh, uh, upgraded according john please yeah i was i actually put myself in line to say almost the same thing um you did which is yeah, if we need to ship it right away, then do the pragmatic thing. But if we, you know, can afford to, to take our time, then I mean, it, it sounds from Rob's comment, and Rob, I'd be interested in your, you know, read back if I'm understanding you right, that um, th this isn't thought to be like we're using it wrong. It's just that we're, you know, sort of pushing the envelope on the tooling. And um, so as long as our timeline allows the tooling to catch up, that I would think ought to be okay. Um, uh, so Rob, again. So I think I need to look a bit more closely exactly what's being used here. It's XPath in its use in its usage of in Yang. Um, the sort of some bits of XPath that they want, and some bits of XPath you just get because it's XPath. And in terms of the implementations, I suspect a lot of them just do the basic 
um, I want a path into the tree type thing and don't do the more complicated um, stuff of, of actually allowing different sorts of ancestors and searches and things like that because you can write these sort of um, more concise X path expressions but it's just more likely um, that tooling that should handle this just won't because they just do the basic thing so that's my concern is that um, I'm not sure whether they will be running um, a generic X path parser it might also be I'll have a look the other thing is to see what um, the Yang author guidelines says because they may well also have some recommendations here. I think there's some text about that. I can check that. But um, I don't mind you trying it, but I think it's definitely worth having a wide discussion first before we ship something with this, because it you may just be you're making your lives harder and, and the people who use, who use this lives harder as well. OK, I mean, that's that's great feedback, guys. Um, and we, I think we totally agree with you that this isn't sort of a sort of burning um, uh, issue for us right now. Um, we can continue um, with the document. Obviously, there are other documents that are sort of complementary to this anyway. We will highlight this, I guess, with some of the other um, uh, document authors uh, in, in T's and uh, follow up again with the guys in NetMod and just you know, see where we are um, in another month or so. Yes, thank you. Um, my, uh, yeah, my concern is uh, when we do, my understanding is from the NetMod discussion also from the RSC 8407 is that uh, it is a legitimate use uh, uh, Ancestor. The problem is that if the tool does not support it, uh, there will be a roadblock uh, to the adoption by the market of our module and that's why my suggestion is to to go with a relative path and in the future if it becomes supported we can always take it use it because it is much better from writing and reading but if the tool is not supporting it then we have a good one model that nobody implements and it's not good to me thank you hi you are you are in the queue I, I think I, I uh, Italo already said uh, what I wanted to ask. Okay. Great. Sorry to close the queue, but uh, we needed to rush a little bit. Optical path computation. Italo, please. Okay, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, good, okay. Uh, sorry, hi everybody. I'm Nicolo Bruzzi from Norway. I'm presenting uh, the RAF of Coatours, uh, an updated version of the optical path computation draft. Uh, next slide, please. I cannot move. <laughs> okay. Oh, what is the status? Okay, initial version of this draft has been presented in the last ITF meeting. Uh, and it is a quite a straightforward work at this moment in time because uh, what we are doing here we are basically augmenting uh, the t path computation model which is generic uh, with uh, uh, technology specific uh, information and we are using the common definition from the rsc 1993 bis and from layer one types uh, and and the work we do uh, like the, the the t generic is in alignment with all the work which is ongoing on ot and w's and flex internal models uh, and uh, as mentioned by Daniel, we are discussing uh, any issues on the draft in the weekly call together with the flexibility topology and tunnel models. Next slide. What we changed from the previous version, we added the AYANA considerations and we added some acknowledgements because uh, uh, an initial version of W zone and flexibility be the PAC computation uh, model has been taken out from the from the from the from their drafts uh, and we put acknowledgement to south to their authors uh, for the initial work uh, or, at least, or to the authors of those drafts we didn't uh, uh, join this draft document uh, we didn't do any change on the otm pack computation and the reason for that is, is because otm tunnel model is quite stable and we are already aligned uh, so as a consequence of OTM, pack computation is quite stable. Uh, we did ma major changes on the W zone and flexibility pack computation based on the weekly call discussion. And in particular, uh, uh, the changes has been reflected uh, in the RSC 1993-BIS on layer zero pack constraint and zero properties. And we are using them uh, to uh, co configure the GSNR margin and report the estimated GSNR in the pack computation response. Next slide. Okay. 
uh, one open issues uh, since the last meeting uh, is again uh, how many modules and how many documents. Uh, we, at this moment, uh, we have one document uh, with the three modules, uh, and we we see that the OTM pack computation is quite uh, uh, unrelated to the other documents, uh, to the other modules. Sorry, while WSM and, and flexibility pack computation has a lot of commonalities among themselves, uh, especially because all the OTSI uh, related the configuration is independent from whether the, the grid is fixed or flexible while the label specific information which is related to the grid configuration is different between WSON and FlexiGrid and we are using the types in the RSC 1993 bis and uh, actually in RSC 1993 which are common between the pack computation and WSON and, and topology models so the, the, the doubts that we have is what do we do here and uh, we had some discussion in the last few days among quotas and our proposal as as, as quotas is maybe we can have uh, one document we can split into two documents in one document we develop the otm pack computation which is quite independent from the other one and also has a different maturity level and in the second document we dev we try to put together into one module as well the w zone and flexi grid pack computation uh, configuration uh, modules into one we need to understand how to reconcile the the issue with the label uh, configuration but we can exploit this option and see what are the whether it is technically feasible so this will be the, the proposal and next next slide. So the next steps is to address any comment and feedbacks we receive. Uh, we can um, complete the document with the security and manageability considerations, which are currently empty. And uh, uh, we keep alignment uh, with the discussion ongoing with the uh, relative uh, tunnel models because uh, the, the, the path constraints and path properties are the same. And uh, we, we, we want to finalize uh, the, module doc uh, the modules document structure. And the, we had the proposal uh, uh, discussed uh, before. And we think the document is ready for the adoption of uh, uh, working group. And if you split into documents, both documents will be ready for adoption. Thank you. Oh, Miana, please. Hear me? Uh, I'm trying to ask a question for clarification on the modern dependency. It looks you mentioned uh, the layer zero and layer one types would be, uh, uh, would be how to say, uh, this work depends on the layer zero and one type. And is there any other models uh, this work depends on? It depends also on the ITF pack computation. And I don't, I would double check, I don't remember any other dependency. Okay, then uh, my personal uh, opinion is uh, the number of uh, documents should be uh, only increased if the dependency is different. So, so that means maybe uh, we can have one for uh, layer one and the other one for layer zero. But in the document, uh, actually, you can have multiple models as you like. I agree. I mean, uh, probably merging uh, W zone and flexi grid could be could be a good idea. I mean, in this in the end, uh, the W zone can be considered a subcase of of flexi grid. Uh, keeping uh, layer zero and layer one separate uh, is uh, is a good idea as well because I mean uh, uh, we have uh, different uh, implementations that uh, only care about uh, optical and uh, only care about OTN. So keeping the documents separate there is uh, is a good idea as, as well. But I mean this is just. Uh, uh, let me say uh, a reflection. Uh, I, I, I'm open to whatever the working group uh, uh, believes is the best is, is the best idea. Any other opinion here? Okay, if not, we can move uh, to this to the next slot. Okay, hello, hello, please. Hello. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Chao Dong from Huawei. 
I'm glad to do this presentation on behalf of all the contributors. Our job is dealing with network hardware in one dimension and provide a young data model, which can be used in the northbound of the network control. Okay, please next page. Uh, our job first presented in last ITM meeting, both in CCAMP and OPSAWG. And we got some valuable suggestions. In particular, we are suggested to target the borders and find a technology agnostic model. Uh, so at first, we removed the optical constraint in draft name and title. And based on the feedback from OPSAWG uh, discussion, we have analyzed some uh, inventory related job in OPSAWG and we have found no overlap. Therefore, we have clarified that this job is for hardware inventory management on network scale. Uh, we also replaced the terminology of shelf with chases because chases is, is a more recognized technology agnostic term. Um, uh, another major update is that we have presented a stability issue in, in the draft uh, that this, this issue may lower integration efficiency uh, between systems. Okay, please next page. In the current model proposal, uh, most of the objects, just like chases, slot, subslot, uh, etc., are, are defined as network elements component, and they are uh, distinguished by their class. Uh, in real network scan uh, scenario, if the upper system want to do the full synchronization, uh, we cannot retrieve all the network elements, including the their components, at one request because no system can bear so uh, such huge amount of data. And the number of each component time in, in one network element uh, is not certain, so, so that it is hard to use pagination. So one possible way is that the network controller provide retrieving uh, data from network elements one by one. Uh, and secondly, uh, in currently, relational database implementation are commonly used in ICT industry. And for different inventory objects, they are safe in different tables, both in the network controller and the upper system. So when doing the full synchronization, uh, the network controller shall combine component objects together according to this uh, model structure. While the upper system uh, needs to class classify and, and sort them into different groups, this combination and sorting progress is inefficient. Uh, even if the time consumed for one network element is not too much, but it increase, uh, but it increase linearly with the number of network element, and could become hours with tens. Uh, thousand network and scale network okay next page please uh, this slide provides some detail on the workflow uh, when doing the full synchronization in the first step the client can collect some other inventory object uh, which are not defined under the network element for example equipment room and racks and then the client can start to synchronize the network elements data and, and the components underlay. But before that, you need, you need to retrieve the identifier of all the network elements. But this step but don't take too much time. Okay, next page. And then the client will retrieve the components of each uh, network element one by one. When the server receives the request, uh, internally it will query its uh, different table to construct this uh, response. The chases, the slot, the board, the pause should be combined together uh, to a single component list. The client receives this uh, 
component least response, it cannot recognize them quickly uh, and, and they need to solve them by the class attributes one by one. These two steps, uh, step 18 and step 19 are time consuming and could lead to an efficiency issue in large scale network. This in, uh, efficiency issue has also been found with other young data model integration and a mail have been sent to CCAMP, TIS and NAMO mailing list uh, to get more feedback and from the wider group. Okay, next page, please. Uh, as a summary, uh, the draft has been updated to clarify its scope and describe the possible efficiency issue with the uh, with the current model. And for the next next step, uh, we believe that uh, more discussion in CCAMP, uh, net mode, and TIS working group is required. Then we can determine a final model structure. In parallel, we will analyze more use cases uh, considering other technologies. And we think that uh, the draft uh, is ready for working group adoption and the technical issue can be addressed uh, through normal working group progress process. Uh, also, and contributors have a weekly meeting uh, every, sorry, here I made some mistake, uh, every Wednesday uh, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, in American Central uh, stand, Standard Time. Anyone who is in, uh, interested with uh, inventor, uh, inventory uh, is welcome to join this call. Just let us know. Okay. The discussion minute and most of the information can also be found in the GitHub re uh, repository. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thanks to you. I'll, I, I'll start with other questions. So during, uh, during the week uh, at the routing area meeting, uh, uh, we were requested uh, uh, to report uh, on work that might need uh, coordination with other working groups. And we uh, brought up Ocean Lighting, where we already have uh, a pretty good interaction with the TIS. And this is one of the other uh, uh, topics that we brought up. I didn't remember uh, that uh, you already had uh, the, 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 the draft presented in OPSA uh, working group. That is extremely good. Uh, so if uh, uh, they are uh, happy to have the draft uh, uh, being progressed as it is uh, in CCAMP, uh, I think that we can uh, uh, we, we, we can make a, we can make a poll. Is my understanding correct that the OPSA working group is, is happy to have the, the, the work being done in CCAMP? Mm, yes. In last meeting, uh, for OPSAWG, they suggest uh, us to uh, run this uh, draft in CCAMP. And, and we also uh, discussed in CCAMP last meeting, and we agreed to uh stay in uh uh in ccam working group okay okay omiana you were in the queue with your disappeared okay then rob please hi so, sorry um rob Wilson. i've not been able to review this but i do think that with the overlap with um maybe the entity Yang model that's there today. So maybe this is a network wide one. I basically I think I need to review this. It may be that this might be better to do um, in the ops area um, rather than CCAMP. I just want to understand what the scope of this document is. And I want to make sure that we get sufficient reviews across the right areas to make sure that we don't, we're not standardizing a very generic thing within this working group and it's not getting sufficient reviews. So I think that's the key thing to me is make sure we get those reviews. I'm not saying it can't be done here, but that's one one aspect. The other the other comment on a in terms of the structure, uh, again, I haven't actually reviewed the document, so it's hard to review, to comment. But um, in terms of flexible models, it's worth looking at the open config platforms Yang model. 
um, because they have a way of um, being quite generic and flattening a tree-like structure down into a list with parent and and sub uh, parent and sub component or children pointers um, that allows you to have fairly generic structures and still have the data. So I think that that approach may possibly work here, or it's worth looking at. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the first question, uh, uh, actually, we are open for uh, the whether to run this job in in uh, CCAMP and uh, OpenSAWG, and if uh, if you consider that uh, our analyze on the old lab uh, is not sufficient, or, or maybe it's, uh, we still need to do some work, and maybe we can uh, have a check uh, uh, through email uh, after this meeting. Okay. And for the uh, second question about the uh, um, trick structure uh, integration, um, and if there is a uh, is a lot of uh, a lot of level, and there's a the tree is very deep, and we think that there there, uh, there could be uh, could be issue when do the doing the integration. And I also send the email in the uh secam working group and maybe we can you can have a look and then we can have a further com uh, discussion okay thank you uh, it, yes, it could you... easily so, sorry I, I was just saying that it could easily be that uh, the, the 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 draft might uh, end up being split into two parts so one of which is a generic and will be progressed in, in, in the opsa working group and there, there might be a more specific one that we can take in secam that that's a, a, a fairly uh, viable option as well. Yeah, I mean, Robert? I, I, yeah, I was just gonna say, it's just trying to find the reviews, get the right right reviews. I'm not that concerned about where the document's done. It's just making sure we get the right comments and things. Uh, if you drop me an email, then um, then I can a follow up the discussion on that side, and also uh, I can give you points in terms of the structure. But I need to review this anyway. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Come on. In the good order to come uh, right after <laughs> Robert. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, I, I agree with Danielle saying that uh, the OPSAWG experts is feeding back saying that this uh, module is quite close to the hardware inventory, and it looks um, um, well. Currently, the term inventory is a little bit uh, uh, misused or overused in the OPSAWG, and the same term are having different meaning. Uh, so it it would be extremely useful to clarify the scope for each inventory related work and uh, the expert some of the experts fit that with us this is more closer to uh, the hardware inventory and it's okay to run in either side and regarding the kind of generic units and uh, the technology specific features from the hardware inventory is perspective we do think there are uh, quite high percentage of similarity. And uh, that means uh, if we only stand, uh, if we only stand from the perspective of optical, there may not be very much technology uh, specific uh, augmentation like we did in the Polygon tunnel. Are you up? just some quick comment on the scalability problem uh, because this model is used at the MBI of the controller which uh, interfaces with the mini network nodes right uh, so if we uh, try to get all the inventory data from all the nodes in the in the network uh, it's the data is going to be huge and that's where the, the scalability problem is coming from uh, whereas the open configure model um, uh, it's, uh, it's um, let's say it's a um, uh it's a single network element uh, so the data is not as much as what we would deal with in a, from a controller uh, perspective and um, uh, we have discussed this issue in our weekly uh, meetings and um, I, I mean it would be rather interesting to hear what the community uh, is dealing with uh, uh, that uh, level of uh, data um, and how they deal with the scalability because uh, certainly our goal is to 
uh, not in uh, to not interfere with the data model structure uh, be just because there's uh, there's a scalability uh, problem. Um, I think it would rather we need to have a, find a generic way of dealing with that uh, problem. Yeah. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Uh, the folks working on this part should really have a look at the open country platform model uh, Rob has pointed out. Uh, I don't really understand whether there's really a, a scalability issue, but uh, yeah, I think this should be considered in my opinion. Okay. Uh, okay, you're still in the queue. I think uh, we can move to the next slot. We have 20 minutes left uh, for two presentations, so 10 minutes each uh, as, uh, as planned. The next presenter, please. Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm a shopping from ZTE. Uh, presented this talk to, on behalf of the courses from uh, China Mobile and the uh, Next page. Uh, this talk provides some configuration requirements based on some existing days in the draft. And uh, also, it provides some configuration restrictions of the group and the class time based on the configuration model. Next page. Okay. Yeah, here are the standards are for are being published a series of uh, implementation, uh, implementation agreements, including version 1.1 to 2. And uh, the flux project will be kind of supporting a variety of Ethernet mark rates, may not correspond to an existing Ethernet file rate. And uh, in, in ITU, it uses the, the flexi, the form format, and it also defines some flexi adaptation functions, true term, termination functions, and the relevant uh, management uh, information. In ITF scan or group, there are several drafts talking about flexible frame controls and the configuration your models. Uh, currently, we think the flexible configuration model draft uh, get a good catch of previous discussions about flexible modeling and gives a basic flexible configuration model. That's a good start point to put forward the flexible modeling. Thank you, next page. Uh, based on the standards and the drafts mentioned and uh, some discussion in the mail list, configuration requirements are summarized into three categories. Uh, here you can see flex group, flex calendar, and flex client. For the flex group, it includes such requirements as configuring the flex group, uh, verifying the configuration, and uh, if inconsistency exists, notifications to be invoked. Uh, for the flex calendar, the requirements include the configuration, updating the usage state of calendar slots and the verification. For flex client, the requirements include the assigning calendar slots, adding or removing flex clients into or from the flex group. Next page. Uh, this figure shows an example configuration including a flux group between the flux multiplex node and the flux demultiplex node, which uh, with four Mahler D files bonded together and uh, two flux clients occurred over this flux group. Uh, the flux group should be configured before the flux client and the initial configuration commands could be 
for the external management system or SDM controller. The flex, con the flex configure model shows the necessary parameters about the flex group and the flex client. Uh, listed model for could be used for further augments or extension. Next, please. Thank you. This uh, the right part. Is the young tree is accepted from the flex E configuration model, and the, the on the right part, some of the data node are described and explains uh, where they come from, when will be configured, what state will be updated. Next page. Here is an example uh, showing configuring the flex group in the flex D max and the flex D max. Uh, you can go to the details if you are interested. In. Next page. Uh, this part, uh, the red part of the young tree is also exported from flex configure model. And on the right part, uh, details are described and explained. And the next page. This page shows, shows the flexible configuration, uh, flexible uh, clients, two flexible clients configuration in the flex max and the flex D max. Next page. Uh, next, uh, next steps, and uh, we've update the draft according to the work group feedbacks and to propose merge this draft into the flex configure model draft. And I hope the merged draft would be adopted as work group draft in the near field. Thank you. Rob, please. Hi, Rob Bolton. Um, yes, thank you for this. Um, I think it's, I know that the work group was trying to work on Flexi previously and then that work sort of got stopped. And so I'm really pleased to see this coming back. I think it's great um, for the ITF to work on a model in this area and to get that done. So so that I'm really pleased with. Um, I sort of agree, also agree that merging these two drafts together, the one that's talking about applicability in the actual Yang model, that makes sense to me. Um, often you see, sort of see um, examples of how to use the Yang models in the appendix. Um, so that's a good thing to do. One comment I've got in terms of this, the current structure of the model, and this is probably a comment more on the other draft than this one, is I questioned a bit about having the Flexi client configuration under the client interface rather than having it under the sort of Flex E container that you've got on, on slide five. So I'm talking about slide five and seven. And my reasoning for that is that the Flexi client configuration isn't really so much about the client interface, as in everything else that you'd normally expect to be on there, but it's actually related to how the uh, Flexi interfaces are set up. So if you look at, for example, the time slot list, that list isn't sort of independent for each client interface. You need to make sure that the time slots that you're using are um, sort of organized with the other client interfaces under the same Flexi uh, is a group interface. Um, so that was, that was one comment I have. I don't think this is a, a like a must have change they have to make but i think it would make the model a bit more consistent in my mind so that would be my recommendation but i've also provided that to the authors directly when they when i review this thank you thank you Robert. there is also a question from leader uh, how is this a flexi draft related to draft one second flexi young uh, configuration model zero two i if if you wanted to answer but what is the relationship the relationship between the two drafts uh, uh, uh in this uh, in this draft we give the example based on the Plus configure model, the first draft, and also we summarize some 
requirements, I think that's that part did not exist in the first draft. I mean, I, I, I agree with Rob when saying that these two drafts uh, seem to be perfectly fitting together and merge into a single one. Um, I I only have one question. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I will, I'm seeking for a confirmation from you. Uh, there was another draft, uh, uh, another configuration model uh, draft uh, uh, a while back uh, uh, that uh, uh, was left to expire that seemed to be competing uh, with uh, the configuration model, not uh, with the one that you just presented, but more with the configuration model. I don't know how the, um, let me say, the competition was solved. It was just that the other one uh, was left uh, uh, to, to, to expire, or uh, a, a solution, a common ground was found between the two drafts in, in, the, uh, uh, in this configuration model. Because I mean, I'm I'm happy to merge these two drafts and progress them, but uh, I would like to make sure uh, that this is something that everyone is happy with. Uh, is not that we are leaving uh, a, a, a something competing behind uh, um, and forgetting about it. Uh, we don't uh, want to renew the progress draft, and uh, we want to merge this draft and with the first configure model draft. Okay. Thank you. That's fine, thanks. We are ready for the last presentation. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm Shen Liu. I'm from China Mobile. Uh, and that's the two authors of this draft. So, just, uh, I uh, so I will go through quickly. Uh, first, uh, uh, we need an optional network to access uh, flow to support a uh, high quality connections uh, for areas such as finance, medicine, and uh, and uh, OTT companies. So previously, usually we use IP networks to access network, but uh, we suffer from issues such as uh, touring and the congestion of packets. So optical transport network uh, start to play a more important role in carry, carrying traffic to access clause. Uh, but uh, there are some uh, shortcomings for current optical transport network. Uh, for example, uh, right now optical tr transport network usually have uh, unified flows. Uh, it uh, cannot uh, identify the priority of uh, the uh, services. Also, um, we need uh, the provided the provide a uh, guaranteed performance for optional network. Uh, another thing is a uh, optional network need to support small granularity for uh, service to access uh, a clause because there are many uh, enterprise and customer. Uh, to access cloud. Uh, another thing is we need to support the massive connections and uh, the network should be, be dynamic. Next slide, please. So previously we have uh, uh, exampled uh, several use cases. Uh, one, the first one is multiple cloud accessing we need to support the multi-point to two multi-point uh, access rather than previously just point to point access. Next slide, please. Uh, the second use case is high quality list line. Uh, 
uh, previously a high quality uh, private LAN on it and support large bandwidth, low latency, high security, high reliability. And uh, the, uh, the proposed uh, control and management system of, uh, of the new uh, optical network should uh, uh, support uh, differentiation of uh, SRA adapted to dynamic performance change. Uh, be aware of traffic demand. Uh, and uh, faster deployment to a customer customized uh, event. Next slide, please. Uh, another example is cloud virtual reality. It requires high uh, specifications, um, so and high de demand. So also the control and the management need to uh, support uh, awareness of service. Uh, for them to start and end time and uh, the dynamically uh, tiny the bandwidth. Uh, next, next slide, please. So in summary, and the uh, requirement for the control and the management service uh, for optical network to uh, access uh, cloud uh, need to support the following core features. Uh, the first is um, it uh, support uh, various uh, such as uh, R one to R three sorry uh, service uh, to to access the clause. Uh, the second feature is a uh, service awareness. It can, it should know the start at the end of the service and uh, the and the uh, dynamic uh, change the SRA. According to the requirement of uh, customers, uh, uh, the second, uh, the, the third thing is reliability. It should uh, adapt to the network with fast recovery, and uh, the last thing is uh, sustainability because it you need to support massive access. So next slide, please. So. Uh, this uh, draft uh, gave the update of the pre and the optical to cloud problem and statement, and uh, uh, this document now is more focused on optical sp optical specific characteristics, and uh, uh, it also focuses on control and management uh, systems. Uh, so the intention of this draft is to confirm the usefulness of uh, the optical network for accessing clause and uh, uh, this uh, draft uh, added, uh, added further gap analyst and the problem statement and uh, we call for interest and join contribution thank you thank you Dan, please. Hi, um, hi guys. Thank you for the, the presentation. Um, I just noticed uh, on um, your summary slide that that you're looking for um, uh, contributions and sort of interest in the work. Uh, the use cases um, were quite high level. It will be really interesting to know uh, what specific requirements have been derived from those use cases. Uh, the, the the point. I wanted to make is that there's a European um, Commission funded project called Terraflow that that I'm a member of and, and we're also working on this area sort of using a an optical underlay for interconnecting cloud resources for um, terabit um, packet services so there is maybe some interesting um, uh, requirements that we've identified in that project although it is research it has commercial applicability that are operators involved um, in the project so uh, I'm wondering if there's maybe some uh, uh, some technical um, uh, findings conclusions that we've sort of documented that may be useful um, for this work I will post those maybe uh, in the chat window and follow up with you uh, offline that would be great I'll be on the Thank you. Thank you for uh, for you to raise the very important point. Uh, there are a few more uh, information. Uh, 
from the uh, previous days on this IETF meeting. We are also aware of some nice work from IRTIF, from the KMBOF, and from some other working groups talking about the future of the routing protocols. And it looks we are also, the, uh, from this draft, we are also evaluating where is the future gaps and uh, try to find uh, the next objective we are setting to the current protocol stack. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, we would like to re invite more review and comments from the working group. That's it, thank you. Thank you a lot. And for once, we are perfectly on time. That's it for today. Thanks a lot, uh, everyone, for participating. Apologies to Rob for uh, uh, producing more work for him than most of his working groups. <laughs> and uh, thanks a lot to, to, to him for being so active uh, in uh, helping us moving forward our younger work. That's it for today. Thanks a lot. Have a good rest of the day. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.